Welcome to everybody to this session uh, where we discuss the future of work and whether degrees are relevant today. I am joined by uh, Tram and Nguyen, who is the co-founder of CFTE in London, which is an online training program, and Kate Batts, who's the managing partner of Longevity Capital USA. Uh, I'm Grant Schreiber, the moderator today, and also the uh, founding editor of Real Leaders magazine and very privileged to be guiding this discussion today. We had one person who's had a few problems uh, trying to join us today, um, Ed Hajim of High Vista Strategies. Hopefully he manages to join us. Uh, if not, we will, we will kick off. Um, so we're living in an age where a job for life has been replaced by lifelong learning, where technology has enabled online courses and degrees to quickly fill the learning gaps that have been left unfilled by a formal education and where qualifications can also be bought at an affordable cost as needed. The landscape around degrees and education has certainly changed dramatically uh, with technology and AI. And I wanted to ask um, to start off by uh, explaining the kind of work she does um, as an online training program and what she's seeing in the marketplace that's, that's notable to her today. Yes, no, thanks a lot. Uh, first, you know, uh, it's a great pleasure uh, to be uh, attending uh, this event and thanks for having me. Um, uh, just to, before I start, I'd love to uh, perhaps introduce myself uh, so that people know a little bit about, about myself. I'm Chama Nguyen. I'm, uh, I'm the co-founder of CFT. We are the largest global uh, platform for fintech education. Uh, I hold many hats as well, being also CFT co-founder, but I'm also the board member of EDEC, and I tell you why I'm saying that, and the board panel advisory of the Association of the Corporate Treasurers, also um, uh, entrepreneurship expert at State Business School at Oxford, uh, and also um, uh, key opinion leader, top 22 key opinion leaders in fintech and being awarded top 100 women uh, in fintech. Um, before being an entrepreneur and having set up CFT, I used to be in banking. I used to be a private banker for uh, at UBS in London and advisor to family offices. And I used to also work in New York in capital market as a trader. And uh, a couple of years ago, so five years ago, I quit everything and launched myself uh, with my co-founder uh, in London, uh, CFT. Um, and the objective of CFT is very much about how do you equip professionals and students with the skills to thrive in this new world of finance. Uh, because jobs are being transformed because of technology. There are lots of people that are being left uh, behind. Uh, and so our objective is very much to bridge that gap to bridge that gap between people that are professionals today, that are adults professionals, and how do you make sure that they're becoming lifelong learners? And how do you equip them so that they can really get into those jobs of the future in finance uh, and in fintech? Uh, so that's, uh, in a nutshell, what uh, I do. Uh, we lost to you, for, uh, 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 but uh, I, I was uh, just sharing about uh, the objective of CFT and and today, the objective of CFT is very much to disrupt the way we are educating people uh, by uh, including online courses and specialization, leadership training and hands-on entrepreneurship, extrapreneurship experience in topics such as fintech, open banking, digital payments and artificial intelligence. Uh, so my role is I spent a lot of time with governments policymakers, industry experts, entrepreneurs, uh, uh, CEOs of fintech companies uh, to find framework uh, and initiative to upskill and reskill talent in uh, the future of finance. So I can talk a lot about what we are seeing in the industry uh, to help creating talent of the future in finance um, and to create and, and the objective is very much uh, for me, I believe that in this new world of finance, we need to create a world that is much more inclusive, diverse, innovative, and that will have a positive impact on society and uh, people. Um, that's, uh, that's about uh, uh, myself uh, and CFT. Great. And Kate, uh, I'd love to hear a little bit more about your work. You're a corporate lawyer by profession. Obviously, a degree, a formal degree in that profession was required. Um, 
but you have mentioned you're seeing an emerging trend where there's less need for it, really. Yes, and well, let me first allow to introduce myself. Uh, I'm Kate Butts. Uh, I'm a managing partner at Deep Knowledge Group and Longevity Capital. As you rightly mentioned, I am a corporate lawyer in uh, California and New York by background. And like Trump actually uh, made the, the transformation of my career because I really wanted to do something, uh, well, I would say more meaningful uh, by joining Deep Knowledge Group because uh, it's a consortium of commercial and nonprofit companies that are active on the, you know, many avenues of uh, deep tech and frontier technology, such as, you know, AI, longevity, uh, also fintech, investment, invest tech, and a number of others. Uh, so um, I'm not going to elaborate about uh, the uh, very uh, large structure of Deep Knowledge Group because we do many things. We invest, we also have analytical subsidiaries, and we participate in a number of uh, non-profit, non-profit initiatives as well. Uh, but uh, let's, we're probably best known uh, for... Uh, our analytical subsidiaries, such as Asian Analytics Agency, because we've been producing since uh, approximately 2015 a number of open access analytical reports uh, focusing on longevity or, or health span, so living healthier for longer. Uh, so as part of this uh, initiative, it's required lots uh, of, uh, you know, uh, man hours. Uh, we, of course, uh, had professionals as well, but uh, one of the uh, ways we attracted talent is actually actually recruited lots of uh, students from uh, Eastern European universities. And that has proven to be a very successful uh, experience, I think, for both parties, because, you know, students who could be, you know, second year or third year would get a hands-on experience and work side by side uh, with professionals. And also uh, there were quite a few cases when, you know, regardless of age or uh, degree, you know, some people really got promoted very fast uh, in this uh, fast paced uh, environment. So uh, essentially, we combine the skills of people who have degrees and including PhDs because it's, the topic is complex, but also there was absolutely no hierarchy in terms of uh, promotion of someone who does good job. Uh, so great. Um- I just wanted to ask uh, Tram again. She mentioned an incredible fact the other day when we were talking that there were, I think it's 40,000 jobs that never existed a few years ago that you've yes. identified. Um, there's an old piece of knowledge from many years ago that if you start a, a career now or a degree now, by the time you finish, it won't even be relevant anymore. That's the pace we, we're dealing with. Yes. Can you speak around how you actually future-proof yourself around that type of situation? Yes, no, thanks a lot for asking the the question. I think um, to give you a little bit of background and I'll step, uh, I'll I'll, I'll, um, I'll give a little bit uh, more um, background. So before COVID, I spent a lot of time and we spent a lot of time convincing people about uh, the urgency of upskilling and reskilling. Uh, And today, after COVID and post-COVID, it's not about the why anymore, as it's clear, it's a necessity of how. How do we actually address with it? The the pandemic has accelerated this digital transformation of our industry and in particular finance. I think the the main importance for us is adapting to our digital world is now, therefore, more critical than ever. And as we think things change swiftly, now we're having millions now finding themselves with inadequate skills. And uh, that's why I spent and CFT spent a lot of time to help people and organization to find ways to upskill and reskill in order to make the next move. So at the same time that this digitalization is happening, I think we have seen with COVID and the pandemic now uh, over us, there's unemployment. It's rising fast. That's, 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 uh, that's things that we're, the risk of having a large part of the population out of work and with outdated skills, preventing them from finding a good job is real. And so for us, based on that, what we are doing is that we are seeing that finance industry 
and this is my industry, is ill prepared, how do you prepare them? How do you prepare our industry so that people can really, and we're not talking about the students, I can talk about how, how we are seeing the students, but professionals that are 20, 30, 40, 50, even 60 year old, how today they can be readapting uh, by uh, and readapting to jobs that didn't even exist a couple of years ago. So we did, and, and this is what uh, uh, you were mentioning, and thanks for asking the question, is that now we are seeing this big industry that is transforming because of technology, the knowledge gap and the lack of knowledge is alarming. It's huge. It's huge. So my question is, how do we do that? How, who should be part of the reconstruction? Uh, is it the individual? And the question is, how can I adapt and update my skills? Is it the responsibility of the individuals? How do the individuals stay relevant? The second part should be, how can I train thousands of employees at the same time? It's upskilling the organization. And from the government side is how can we support millions of citizens to reskill the nation? Um, and based on that uh, questions, we thought very hard because we know finance is transforming. We are very much close to the fintech industry. Why don't we launch the research that we have conducted? And this is coming to the questions. And we did a, a research uh, based on analyzing um, 20, 20, 225 largest fintech companies around the world the past few months. And we have identified 40,000 new jobs that even, even exist two years ago. What are those jobs that are now being created by those fintech companies? And what are uh, the skills uh, that are relevant? And the main objective of this report was that to understand the jobs in fintech and why am I seeing fintech? Because a lot of people are underestimating that the fintech industry is a huge industry. Uh, I, I, I will tell you a little bit more um, about it, but the report itself is to understand the jobs in fintech. It's what are the skills required for those jobs and how do you acquire those jobs? So it can create pathways for anyone that has been into traditional job today and want to get into those 40,000 digital jobs in fintech and in finance, how do you make them to transfer to those jobs? And so that's the research and the book uh, that I have been a uh, co-author at I've launched. I'd be very happy uh, to share it uh, with everyone. It's uh, free and available to, to everyone. Uh, but the idea around that is that you can't underestimate that the industry of fintech today is huge. Uh, it has represent 2.7 trillion of market cap, and we have identified 40,000 jobs offered by this company. And this report also reveals that the fintech industry employs more than 300,000 people, which is significantly large number, considering that the largest financial center, such as New York or London, employed 450,000 and 400,000 people respectively. So fintech industry could be considered as a city in the world, employing people. And when I talk to the CEOs of the fintech companies, the 225, and they're all t telling me we are lacking talent. We can't find the right talent. So they are looking for talent, but there's a mismatch between employers and employee. People don't have the skills. And to tell what are the skills, to tell you, because the books can speak itself, but the, 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 the gap that is widening much more is that people don't have the knowledge. So that is one thing. They don't have the hard knowledge. They need soft skills. They need mindset. And they need experience. Today, we don't hire any more people based on their CV. We hire them on totally different things. Uh, and, uh, you know, it, this is very obvious. So people want to have much more than hard skills, knowledge, and what you get from your CV. Now it's all about your experience, your knowledge industry, but also your mindset. Um, and I can elaborate more if you wish, but soft skills are very important. But one thing that is very, very clear from the 
book and the report and the research that we have conducted is technology is eating finance. Is there's what the one message I want to convey today? You must have digital skills. Anyone today who wants to get into any jobs in finance or in fintech or any industry today, you must understand digital skills. Yes. One of the things I've said a few times in the last few months is that I think all CEOs should understand Google Analytics. It's almost become your new business plan. Understanding that data is, is really important. Um, I want to ask you, Kate, um, something that uh, Tram touched on was, you know, coming together as a team, that degrees and qualifications are sometimes less applicable in an individual way but you might be chosen and brought on board as part of a team where the sum of that team might be stronger than your individual qualification. Can you tell me what you look for when you're hiring? Uh, is it less about that person's individual qualifications or more how they will fit into a team and what that team might produce collectively? Well, let me first uh, say that I completely agree that soft skills are very important. I believe there was a survey by LinkedIn in 2019 which indicated that 89% of hires that don't work out is usually due to lack of soft skills. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, uh, given the type of work that we do, some of which you know, requires a knowledge on the PhD level, so you need to combine both the requisite degree, uh, but the, the dynamics of work at Deep Knowledge work, uh, Group definitely requires having soft skills because there's lots of, there are lots of people, there's lots of uh, you know, management issues in terms of how you need to coordinate and sometimes do, do so on very short notice. So essentially, uh, we look for both. And I also uh, wanted to add to Trump's point that, you know, with the advance of uh, data and AI economy, there is definitely a, a myriad of new uh, jobs uh, openings uh, in addition to fintech. You know, you could take engineering, cloud computing, product development, et cetera, et cetera. And in these spheres, it, uh, you know, having the requisite degree is, is not necessary at all. Uh, having the uh, job skills that can be, uh, you know, revealed through, you know, boot camps or hackathons and all of this. This is what the employer will likely look for, uh, is how good are you are at your job. Uh, and also another trend I see, speaking of online education, there was a survey by, um, let me see, by uh, the Learning House, which provides technology for online education, as well as uh, Future Workplace, uh, which is an HR uh, advisory firm. Uh, so they, uh, they surveyed about 600 uh, HR leaders. And uh, interestingly enough, what was revealed is that 66% uh, of employers are very willing uh, to accept uh, future employees with either online certification or online degree or digital badge uh, and so on. Uh, so I think that's a big uh, developing trend and there is lots of future uh, in online education indeed. I know we lost Grant. Um, so. <laughs> I'm sorry, I keep okay. getting kicked out the event. I, I do manage to get back every time, so please just continue the yes. conversation. Yeah. Well, I, I basically, I just finished, uh, you know, by answering the question, referencing a survey made uh, jointly by the online education firm uh, and the HI, uh, HR uh, advisory firm that actually highlight that most employers uh, are very much uh, uh, welcoming uh, in future employees who obtained uh, either certifications or degrees or digital badges online. So right. essentially, we see lots of future on online education, especially with the emergence uh, of uh, all of the new professions. Right. I just want to ask uh, both of you your opinion on social cause skills. We've seen, especially in the last two years, a big rise in social causes being a very important part of um, what people are looking for in jobs. Uh, that's not something which has traditionally been on any resumes or CVs. Uh, what are you both looking for in terms of, of passion for a company? Because that is one of those things that can't be quantified. It's not a hard skill. Um, can you maybe talk a little bit more around what you look for in, in those areas? Yes, no, thanks for asking. I think yeah, you're totally right. I think especially coming from the the, the generation that are probably younger than us, but what they're looking for, I mean, coming from, they want a sense of purpose. So they look a lot at the values of the company. 
uh, they look at, uh, you know, if we have a mission, a purpose, and they identify themselves to company so that they can work for. So um, that is something I see uh, as, as, as a trend. And that's why I, perhaps I say, you know, uh, fintech being also... Um, I must say, you know, have um, a lot more uh, um, interest from the um, generation that are coming out of university uh, because it's, uh, it, it, it can bring a lot of financial inclusion. So, you know, fintech is, is what is the impact of technology on finance. And today it, it gives access, you know, to finance to people that are around the world that can't access. So uh, 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 usually, you know, people uh, are really, really um, into a uh, Companies that has a purpose and and has an impact, a social impact, uh, uh, part of the values of the company. Um, for, I, I'll tell you a little bit about perhaps uh, my view when uh, uh, at CFT when uh, we hire uh, our own uh, uh, people uh, and and um, we we don't tend uh, to uh, look. Uh, at uh, CV anymore. Uh, we don't look to, to look at CV anymore. Uh, why? Because um, I think uh, it's uh, important for us that uh, the, the, the person that we are hiring, young or not so young, but have the right mindset and their soft skills. Uh, for me, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm considering myself uh, as a startup and we're always looking uh, for people who can adapt very quickly in a fast paced uh, environment, which is quite close to the mindset of an entrepreneur. Uh, so here are some examples of such requirements from smaller to large uh, fintech companies, but uh, the soft skills like being uh, able to collaborate with a diverse group of people and communicate well, but also people that can, um, and that's the the, I think uh, also what I see from the fintech is that it's very much people from all around the world uh, that has this uh, big impact and people really, really like this. Um, I can, I, I will leave Kate also to share her views, but um, I, I would really love to share what I saw over the summer uh, with the students. Um, CFT, we are not at all um, in... Uh, the, the, our, our job is very much to upskill and reskill and supporting workforce uh, professionals to get into uh, fintech uh, and industry of finance. But we've never really worked closely with interns. And uh, over last summer, uh, we were looking for interns for ourselves at CFT. We were looking for uh, dozens of them for London office. And in four days, just by posting on LinkedIn, we had 1,000 applications. Uh, and we very we were very very surprised, uh, and uh, and so we've decided uh, because we we love reaching an impact, and for us it was very much the idea to uh, help and support that we with our partners did a global fintech internship for one thousand interns globally, uh, and we had four thousand interns that applied. We could only take one thousand, but the. 80% of students today are unable to secure an internship in the current environment. Organization can do more to support the next generation. We have documented uh, our experience so that others can do the same by launching virtual internship at scale. But the reality is that it's very difficult for any students today to find an experience. And this is everything that we ask when we recruit people. Do you have a hands-on experience to show that you like uh, what you are doing? But they can't have that experience. So um, for me, if there was one message is that uh, let's try to help uh, and find uh, to help the, the the next generation to have this experience. So um, we, it, it's something that I was very keen to share. Uh, this um, this global fintech internship, we did an impact report that we are sharing back the way we are providing education at scale for anyone. Uh, but the conclusion of the impact report was revealing that there's a gap uh, in society today. First, students got can't get uh, the first work experience so we provided that there were people from all around the world 50 countries represented 48 percent women who are looking for experience and 
being, I have to say, finance is an ill industry, is non-diverse. So having 48% women learning about finance and technology is something that I'm proud of. Uh, train in fintech, in AI, in platforms, they all learn digital skills and soft skills in teamwork and communication, worked on case studies with leading organization and mentored by experienced professional. So if there was one message I would love to convey is that 2020 was a turning point uh, in a lot of lives of students uh, with everything turning remote. They all found very difficult to learn new digital skills and was a crucial step to adapt to this changing nature of how people work and studied and communicated. And if there's one thing that we would love to have uh, an alignment between stakeholders and uh, uh, people from the industry is how do we get people to get those digital skills and those soft skills very, very quickly so that they can be employable. Sure. Well, if I may add a couple of words here, speaking of the purpose, because uh, the key reason why I you know, changed my career, so to speak, switching from law to uh, being the managing partner at Deep Knowledge Group, is that because we actually have uh, an impactful purpose. I mentioned longevity early, and it's uh, nothing uh, super futuristic. It's just increasing the health span uh, of you know, currently living people and focusing uh, on uh, attention on the research that pertains to that. So instead of focusing on age related diseases, we're trying to shift the focus like what can be done in order to uh, preventing the onset of these diseases in the first place, as well as, you know, there are other uh, aspects that you can do uh, in terms of uh, improving uh, health span of currently living people uh, and the preventive me measures as well. So for me, that was very important. It literally affects uh, everyone globally. Uh, you you know, it also affects the economies. Like United States spends close to 20% of its GDP on healthcare, which unfortunately does not quite translate in terms of the lifespan and health spans uh, of Americans because they uh, they do not live the longest or the healthiest uh, compared to other uh, Western countries. Um, and I think that uh, many of our recruits which we also uh, recruit through LinkedIn as well, like Tram said, um, is that they were also uh, attracted by this goal. So for me, it was important personally to join a company uh, with a goal that I care about. And I believe this is the case uh, for pretty much everyone in our group as well. Great. I just want to bring uh, somebody on board. Uh, we have Gustavo Lopez Gori, who's uh, chairman and co-founder of Smarter Chains based in Switzerland. Um, I'm not sure if he's still here, but he was keen on, yes, he is. I'm just going to bring him on board. He want, I'm going to invite him on the stage, and uh, he wanted to ask one or two questions. Hi. Hi, everybody. Hello. Pleased to meet you, and welcome on board. Uh, nice meeting you as well. Uh, and guys, this has been, a, to me, you know, I'm probably the only one around, but uh, a very fascinating topic. Uh, uh, highly in my list of uh, concerns about the, the trends and the direction because uh, there is really the gap is enlarging instead of closing. I'm talking the skills gap. Yes. And, uh, when it comes to longevity, you know, of course, as well, there is a major problem that we're not really tackling uh, uh, as a, a, in, a, in a holistic, integrated way. Uh, uh, so as much as there are some efforts that are really good, um, uh, the thought I wanted to share is uh, uh, what are we doing or what can we do to create um, an integrated approach where I always been saying that uh, uh, my area of expertise is operations, manufacturing, uh, uh, supply chain. and uh, But in this area, there are uh, amazing opportunities uh, that, uh, um, uh, that I see, you know, that there are the lack of skills and the and uh, the issues we face uh, with people in, in the industry globally are are really really at, um, uh, big, and addressing that requires that, for example, the the private the private sector and the public sector get together, exactly, uh, sort out what those skills and what are the trends of those skills, mm -hmm. and uh, what is the inventory of skills needed, and then create specific programs for that. You know, we continue. I, I, I've been uh, <laughs> exploring the area of the supply chain uh, college uh, 
degrees and majors and so on, because of course it worries me as a supply chain leader, we don't have the pipeline of talent. Mm -hmm. And uh, every university teaches inventory management and techniques and stuff like that, but they're not teaching uh, the value add of the supply chain, the, 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 what is the magic that we bring to the game? And, uh, and uh, what are the soft skills required to do this and that? What is the train on the skills on, on, the, on, the, on the technical digital uh, arena that uh, if we don't tackle, we're gonna, we're gonna lose competitive uh, by the minute. And we are losing competitiveness by the minute. So we depend today of governments creating shells for us so we can have manufacturing operations in America, for example. Uh, instead of uh, the free, the free uh, uh, um, uh, development of our, our talents and the industry will decide where to place the best, the best operations for, every, for a given industry and, uh, and, and governments and private sector fighting for creating the best offerings in their own countries. So long, long, long intervention. I didn't mean to, to do that uh, to you guys, but I, I'd like to engage if you guys are um, trying to address this issue and if you were trying to address it in this integrated, uh, in line with this thinking, I would love to be part of a discussion with you guys and uh, contribute as much as I can. Great. Maybe if you want to share your email in the comments bar uh, so we can see it there. And if, if somebody wants to get in touch with you, we can do so. Okay, perfect. I do that. Great. Uh, Kate, would you like to respond to what was just said there? Well, I completely agree that it will be uh, very beneficial to join, you know, pu public and private efforts, uh, because obviously uh, you know, there is a need for a certain type of talent that we uh, that does not exist, uh, and that needs to be addressed uh, urgently. Uh, I also wanted, as a side comment, uh, mention such a term as uh, degree inflation, right? So, uh, yes, generally uh, having a you know four year degree uh, warrants a higher salary. However, not every uh, you know, profession really requires a four-year degree. And degree inflation, uh, as a term, generally applies to uh, job positions which require a degree slightly higher than high school, but does not necessarily warrant a four-year degree. And what happens here is that, okay, uh, an so let's say if a person who falls into this category uh, finishes college with the corresponding, you know, expenses and then joins the workforce uh, and then realizes that, you know, they may be overqualified for, for the job that they do, that essentially, you know, can produce the uh, disenchantment from the job. And also it's a kind of a lose-lose situation because an employer will see a disenchanted employee and a subsequent turnover, and they also have to pay them more because there's this expectation that if I have a college degree, I want to make X. Uh, so the, and this is why I think it's uh, very important to, uh, you know, Pro, you know, offer opportunities to, uh, you know, upgrade uh, or create the skill set that's actually relevant. And I think that uh, online education will play a key role in that. Yeah. Are there, are there ways to, you know, once you identify the skills, uh, uh, are there uh, specific uh, methodologies to create the, the pensum, the, the programs and the, are, are there, are those available? Yes, so perhaps I'll, 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 I'll jump on this, but thanks a lot uh, for, for addressing it because it's exactly what I wanted to share early on is that today, as you said, we need an alignment with the uh, government. We need an alignment with the organization and also the ecosystem and the individual. And this is what exactly we're doing ourselves with some of the government. Uh, and I'll share just one example because we are... Uh, we could give a lot of example, but uh, Singapore, I mean, we are based in the UK, but Singapore has approached us a couple of years ago because they, they, they wanted, uh, they saw technology being a threat to all the people. Uh, and they were one of the first uh, with the government and the regulator to put in place um, a mechanism uh, to encourage lifelong learning, to encourage uh, people to be trained about pretty much anything. And that is subsidies by the government. For example, they, they, we are one of the only foreign entity that are training the whole of the workforce in AI in finance, for example, and just, just give you an example. Uh -huh. And everyone are being uh, subsidies to be trained by 
industry experts, so not by uh, academics, but all by the industry, led by the industry, so that you can apply it very quickly to your job. Uh, and uh, it's subsidized by the government, but also encouraged by the organization who, ha who, are, who are being paid to be sent the employee for training. So it's incentivized the individual to be reskill themselves. So that's why we are having a lot of people that are traditional. They're not geeks. They're not technologists. And in very short period of time, to be digital uh, uh, fluent. So they are not geeks, but they can do their job and use yeah. digital. And that is encouraged not only by the government, by giving the, 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 the resident uh, Singaporean, for example, in the case of Singapore, some money to, be, to get trained, but for the employee to be paid per hour to be sent the employee to training well with her. So that is something for us that we have seen works very well. And today the objective is no unemployment. And we at CFT, we are seeing that not only people today uh, in finance are being reskilled and getting job of the future in the field of finance, because this is our industry. But today we are seeing also civil servant, doctors, lawyers, entrepreneurs, uh, prop tech, people that are totally coming from totally different background that are learning about fintech. So people are taking other people from other industry that are getting, and those people are 40, 50, 60, even more that are getting into job, but they have their background into totally different industry. And that is what we are seeing uh, in other parts of the world. Very good, very good. Hey, I, 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 I want, I put my, my contacts information, I think I put it in the chat and not in the, in the comments. Uh, yes. uh, ah, I will try to see, otherwise we, we could connect on, on LinkedIn, but uh, I will. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm sorry hey, about uh, that. Actually, phone let me... number and email in the chat bar, uh, if everyone else can see that. <laughs> Yeah, let me put it again in the comments so you have it, okay? Oh, no, no, it is there. Okay. I'm scared. No, no. If you cannot see it, I will send to you invitations to LinkedIn, to three of you, and then uh, and then we connect on this topic. It's very, this is so important for... I agree. I, I, I will agree. use the word, my favorite, one of my favorite words, prosperity. Yes. And I, I am not an educator. I am not a politician. <laughs> I, I, I'm a simple supply chain uh, guy and, uh, and a manufacturing operations guy, uh, lucky enough to be executive in many companies and, and, and uh, et cetera. But I, the gap worries me uh, yes. uh, in, 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 in from the societal, societal yes. standpoint and the development standpoint and uh, economy growth. This is what worries me. Yes. I just want to end off with, uh, we have another seven minutes left. Um, and Gustavo, you're welcome to join us for the rest of it. We had a few people drop off on this call, so I welcome the extra voice. Um, yeah. We're seeing a, uh, what's being called the great resignation. We're seeing a lot of people moving towards leaving university early to start their own businesses. Can we maybe talk around that trend and what it means for companies and corporations, and especially people who've maybe given up on their their sort of uh, degrees and necessity for, for formal education when they just realize they can jump straight into the marketplace with their own entrepreneurial idea. And um, Tran, would you like to kick off for that? Yes, I think it's very encouraging. This is very, very good because I think we are in the phase where I'm very positive. I see lots of opportunities. I mean, you, if you look only at the industry that is changing so fast, uh, what I always say to any uh, any students that are coming from out of fresh from universities and they're not quite sure, you know, what they want to become or what they want to do, because, you know, you were mentioning, you know, before it was one uh, job, one life. But today, you know, I say to everyone, I said, don't underestimate, you will ending up doing total, totally different things. So I would encourage, you know, anyone today uh, to be an entrepreneur uh, because you can learn. Uh, it's not at 40 that uh, you can uh, fail and do, you know, you can test and learn, but start young uh, because you're going to learn a lot uh, by doing. And, and today, you know, uh, by doing your first um, startup or your first project or build something, uh, you can learn a lot of skills. Mm -hmm. 
provide you uh, being perhaps uh, more employable uh, after that. Uh, but for me, my take is that uh, I, I, I think the, one of the main uh, um, skills that uh, anyone uh, should have today is how do you think like an entrepreneur? Uh, whether you start your own entrepreneurship, your, your, your own startup, or you joined a large organization, we all need people who know how to build things uh, and start young. So my view is that if you are not sure what you want to do and, and you are contemplating, because I said some of the job may have don't exist yet, so you don't know, but start something, start something, uh, learn, fail, uh, but that's a big journey. Uh, and then after that, you'll be employable very soon. Well, I'm, uh, you know, uh, reporting, so to speak, from San Francisco yeah, in the midst of, uh, you know, Silicon Valley. So the land of entrepreneurs, indeed. Um, and, you know, that you don't need to go far for an example, like Mark Zuckerberg did not complete his degree, right? So and Facebook is, uh, let's say, rather successful. And this list can continue, right? So uh, I agree that it's definitely a very important experience. Uh, it does require a certain mindset. So like, you should be prepared to fail. And there's lots of you know business details that you also need to be aware of and have a certain mindset to manage everything. Uh, but uh, I think in, in certain spheres, especially you know cloud computing, product development, you know, you could be a 14 year old genius and you could start a company, right? So it, it doesn't require a degree at all. It's just how good you are. Uh, what we've seen um, as, as a, you know, as, as many successful examples is like a hackathon, for instance, right? Or the digital bootcamp. And then you bring anyone with any, you know, or with or without any degrees and you just give in a certain competition and people emerge and then uh, you hire them. So it's actually happened, uh, you know, it's, it's a common practice. And uh, in fact, one of our flagship investment companies in Silicon Medicine, they recruited their talent uh, this way. And now they're doing uh, very well, precisely use, using these methods. Very good. You know what? I, 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 this, uh, this resonates a lot in my, in my mind. The role of the big corporation in the past is a new is, is a role being taken by entrepreneurs so mm -hmm. the economy goes on that on that on that on that new approach and uh, uh even though we know not every startup is successful uh, that, uh the the amount of and the effort behind and the learning exponentially results into something very positive uh that yeah people become more employ employable sure uh, people know what failing and succeeding is about. People know how important is a decision done at the wrong moment. Uh, people learn about a lot of things. Uh, funding. Oh, my God, funding. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's one of the toughest things I've done. Yeah. Well, I... Uh, oh. we'll, we've had connectivity issues today. I see. So. <laughs> Yeah. But I, I completely agree that we've entered the era of uh, continuous learning for everyone, whether you come from a you know, traditional profession that requires uh, a prerequisite degree, such as lawyers, doctors, etc., uh, but also essentially uh, the uh, the world is developing so rapidly uh, that uh, we will all need to adjust to that with continuous learning. Grant, welcome back. Thank you. I've been on and off about 10 times on this call. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm not sure what's going on. Um, I just, we have two minutes left and I wanted to give Kate and Tram just closing thoughts on what we've discussed today. Just a minute each, please. Uh, Tram, let's start with you. Uh, no, but I think I would agree with, uh, with, uh, with Kate just, just shared, you know, I think we are, uh, we are coming to a stage where the world is full of opportunities. It's very, very positive. There are lots of jobs being created because and thanks to technology. Uh, and uh, there's lots of, um, and change is essential. So I would say, uh, you know, uh, let's create together um, a world of finance and a world that is much more inclusive, much more diverse, much more innovative, uh, and will have a positive impact on society and people. Uh, and continuous education, uh, lifelong learning is the best way, you know, for us to get into this new world. Uh, so uh, that would be my message. Great. Thank you. Yes, I agree, Tram. And I think that uh, you mentioned that um, 
uh, the pandemic opened uh, many doors, so let's say, to online learning, online uh, you know, telemedicine, et cetera, et cetera. So we know that uh, a lot more can be done. And obviously, there's a pressing need uh, for people acquiring certain uh, skill sets, and there's definitely a demand for that. So it appears to be, well, a relative no-brainer that, yes, we, we should join efforts and continue learning and recruit talent, uh, you know, regardless of their uh, degrees, uh, as I, as I gave a few examples earlier. And it's been a great pleasure to be on this panel uh, and to meet everyone. And thank you, Grant, for moderating. Sure. Thank you. We're now at our time, and I'm sure we'll all connect uh, beyond the session. Uh, but uh, Kate and uh, Tram, thank you so much for your involvement today. It's been a really good discussion. Thank Christopher, you. thank you so much for joining us. Uh, you've added some nice depth to the conversation. And uh, we'll be ending the session shortly. So thank you so much. Indeed. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you.